Hi, I'm Jo Chick. I'm a strategic partner manager focused on helping small businesses grow at Google. And I'm really excited and honored to have the opportunity to talk with you today alongside the Broadloom team here at Floorcon 2020. I won't lie, I'd have loved to have been with you in person, but the coronavirus pandemic has reshaped how we think about life and how we do things, both personally and professionally. In particular, I recognize what a challenging time this is for you and your businesses. I have both friends and family who are small business owners and have had to work around the clock and pivot their strategies just to survive. On the flip side, it's also an incredible opportunity to embrace the changes in consumer behavior and to thrive in a competitive landscape by ensuring you're there when your existing and prospective customers are looking for your products and services. Today, I'm looking forward to sharing some key consumer behavior trends we've been seeing over the past years and that we've only seen accelerate over the past six months. We're going to discuss what that means for your business and also we're going to bust some myths along the way. At Google, we spend a lot of time throughout the year meeting with businesses across the US, gathering insights, understanding what makes each business tick and how we can help flooring dealers to grow their business. We also spend a lot of time trying to better understand consumer search behavior, not just how people are searching, but the intent behind that search, the devices from which they're searching and what they're doing at the exact moment of that search. All of these insights together help us provide more powerful and impactful information to you and your business. Mobile has changed everything. We no longer go online, we live online. 10 to 15 years ago, our media consumption was much more periodic and predictable. Now it's spontaneous and sporadic. Take a moment to think how many times you check your phone each day. On average, it's 150 times. And how many of you sleep with your phone next to you or get panicked when you leave your phone at home? Last year, I even chose to miss my flight the first time I'd ever done that because I decided to go back and get my phone that I'd left charging in the airport lounge. The key question is, why is this important for your business? A study showed that nine out of 10 of us turn to search in the first moment of need. This might be anything from finding out where's the nearest flooring store to what's the best net show to binge watch, something most of us have probably been doing during lockdown. We understand that what people search for provides a window into their interests, needs and wants. And amid all of the searches in 2020, new consumer behaviours emerged and a new super empowered consumer took shape. So what does this consumer look like? We've seen evidence of three key behaviours. People are becoming more curious, more demanding, and more impatient than ever before. They can now navigate life from the palm of their hands, make decisions on the fly, and get more done. So let's go through each one and why this is important for your business right here, right now. Firstly, the more curious consumer. People have long turned to search to satisfy their curiosity, even for seemingly mundane things. A fun fact for you, in the past couple of years, we've seen mobile searches for shower curtains and toothbrush reviews more than double. But beyond what people are searching for, how they are searching for it paints an even more insightful picture. And we found people are now being more specific than ever. For example, where people may previously have searched how to install magnetic flooring, they're now searching for how to install Raskin magnetic flooring. But what does this mean? When consumers are deciding on a big purchase, like what flooring type to buy, it's natural that they not only consult friends and family, but also the wealth of digital information out there. Two thirds of us consult our mobile phone even when we're in the store to search for information about the product we're about to buy. And astoundingly, 71% of us trust that information more than that given by the qualified sales rep in the store. You need to ensure you're there with the right advice whenever your customers are looking for you. If not, it's like having your store shut when your valuable customers are trying to find you. Now let's talk about the more demanding consumer. Increasingly, people are expecting to find exactly what they're looking for, wherever and where, whenever they're looking for it. In 2015, near me searches on Google, such as flooring near me, had grown two times in the previous year. Fast forward five years, and we're shifting away from even using location qualifier, qualifiers like their neighborhood, zip code, 
or the phrase near me. Because we know that, thanks to our mobile devices, the results will automatically be relevant to their precise location. It's pretty cool, right? A recent analysis shows that nearly two thirds of smartphone users are more likely to purchase from businesses whose mobile sites or apps customize information to their location. It's critical to capitalize on this behavior to capture your customers. The third behavior we've seen emerge is that of a more impatient consumer. Not only do people want to find actual product, products and services sooner, they also expect a speedy, frictionless mobile experience when they purchase these products and services. The crux of this is that customers are expecting everything on demand, and this is why digital retailing is so crucially important. Clearly, the coronavirus pandemic has caused a dramatic shift in US consumer spending patterns, the effects of which will be felt through the end of this year and beyond. And this super empowered consumer will continue to evolve. We've seen that consumers are looking to retail retailers for preparedness, for example, they want relevant and up-to-date information as they navigate this dynamic environment. And they're looking for assistive experiences, such as the ability to visualize products online from brands and stores that they shop with. So with more than 15,000 flooring-related searches in the US every hour, there is no more critical time to act on your digital marketing and ensure you're there with up-to-date, accurate, and relevant information when your customers are looking for you. Failing to do this is like having your storefront shut and handing your business to your competitors. So what does all this lead us to? To help put a name on these widespread and ever-changing consumer behaviors, we introduce the concept of micro moments. Micro moments are those times where we reflexively turn to a device, mostly our phones, to act on a need we have at that point in time. The I want to know, I want to buy, I want to go, I want to do moments. What's important are that these are intent rich moments where our preferences are being shaped and our decisions are being made. It's these seemingly small moments that are your new battleground for your customers. So how do we identify the difference between just moments and micro moments in a person's day? Let's look at an example. Let's take a look at my colleague Maya's day. Similar to many of us, Maya passes time over a morning coffee by turning to her smartphone for social engagement, news updates and information searches. But let's see if we can make a distinction between moments and micro moments. So when Maya gets up at 7.15, she checks her social media profiles and news feeds. She sees a friend online and decides to ask if they're free for lunch today. She's recently bought an apartment in the city and while waiting on a response from her friend, she sees a post about creative interior design ideas and decides to look up this year's latest trends. Shortly after, Maya takes a photo of some beautiful flowers her sister sent her as a housewarming gift and posts the photo online. Later in the day, Maya and her friend have a great lunch, so she decides to post a positive review of the new lunch spot. On her way back home, she decides to check the status of her online furniture orders. Now you might be thinking, sounds like a normal enough day, but what does this have to do with my flooring business? Let's take a closer look at the micro moments. If you recall, Maya asked her friend to lunch, and she even left a review after the great experience. But there was a moment when Maya needed to look up a local lunch spot and make reservations. This is a moment in which she needed to get something done and needed information to do so. During this search, restaurants had the opportunity to provide her with relevant and helpful information that affected her decision on where to go. I know a couple of my local coffee shops have done an amazing job at keeping their information up to date over the recent months, while others weren't even discoverable and I know from talking to them have missed out on business. Let's take a look at another example. Having been inspired by the interior design trends earlier that morning, Maya's flooring related searches became more specific as the day went on, ending with a search to look for a flooring store nearby. Here lies another moment of need. Any store failing to show up will be out of her immediate consideration set. The distinction for a micro moment becomes clear when you determine whether or not the intent of the search is rooted from a moment of need. So how does a brand, or more specifically your business, get the attention of a consumer in these moments? Our new reality is having an endless amount of media options vying for our attention, and also with video playing a major role. 
As business owners and marketers, it's our job to understand this new reality. And I'd like to bust some myths that may be holding some of us back from investing in digital marketing. First myth, that consumer attention spans are getting shorter. You may have heard that consumer attention spans have shrunk. But in reality, people can and do still pay attention. Our research shows that 81% of video viewing sessions capture people's attention. If anything, we're paying more attention than ever before. What has changed, however, is our tolerance for time wasters. Let's think about our own lives. We no longer put up with something just because it's on, right? 10 years ago, we may have sat through a video that we didn't find interesting. Now we just click next because we can. This means attention is available, but the bar has been raised. If you really want someone's attention, you have to earn it. The second myth is that consumers pay attention to all screens equally. We know that not all screen time is shared equally. When we've got the TV on, how often do we actually find ourselves focused on it? And how does this compare to watching videos on our smartphone? We have two different ways of viewing content. In lean forward mode, and lean back mode. Our lean forward mode includes instances where we're learning how to do something, searching for information about something, or simply exploring a passion project. Whereas our lean back mode includes times where we're just relaxing or passing time. Recent research supports what we intuitively know. When people lean forward to view screens, they're one and a half times as likely to pay attention than when they're in a lean back mode and they're 1.8 times as likely to be in lean forward mode when watching online video compared to TV. For marketers and business owners, these lean forward moments when viewers are less likely to be multitasking and more likely to be watching with purpose are the best opportunity to capture attention. And the third and final myth, even if people are paying attention, they've learned to tune out of ads. So what's the point of being there? If you're like me, certain ads seem to speak to you directly and you find yourself hooked. That's because when we find ads relevant, we can't help but pay attention. According to a recent survey, ads that are relevant to the viewer or feature people like them get three times the attention of the average ad. For example, imagine I'm in the market for a new tile for my bathroom and I see an ad for your business that I can see is local to me and has a special offer promo. That's pretty compelling, right? Today, new technology and data signals make mass personalization possible, which means you can deliver targeted, relevant ads to your potential customers when they're looking for your products. So let's recap. The fact is, it's more than possible to continue to win the hearts and minds of today's world. To do so, you'll need to discard the myths and remember these truths. People still pay attention, but with more content out there than ever before, the quality bar has been raised. You're most likely to capture people's attention through online video versus TV. And finally, once you've captured their attention, hold on to it by making your brand and your business relevant to each platform, each person, and each context. At Google, we often get asked, what's the next big thing? What comes after mobile? Where's marketing headed? We believe that the future coming into view is an acceleration of what we see today. To win your customer, you need to put yourselves in their shoes and at the heart of your marketing strategies. It also needs a willing to, willingness to embrace new standards for business, giving additional focus to these three things. We need to become smarter with data, affect the mobile experience, and embrace omni-channel assistance. Let's start with the first one. Becoming smarter with data. This is a place where Google can help. Let's go back to the example of a consumer searching for new floors to purchase. Based on the user's intent, context and identity, we can identify things like which ad is more relevant for a user who may be a loyal customer to your brand versus someone who might simply be looking to compare prices with competitors. And a lot goes into the background to make this happen. Millions of computations being run in real time for every action to show the most relevant ad. And all you have to do is, to cr is create as many ads as are right for your business. And even better, the Broadloom team are experts on this and can make it work for you. Incorporating data into our campaigns is critical, but once you manage to capture a consumer's attention, it's equally important to provide a great mobile experience. 
We spoke about the significant impact a clunky mobile site can have on engaging and converting your customers. Remember, mobile is the new front door to your business. It shouldn't take a long time to walk in. In fact, this is where digital retailing thrives. From shop at home services to flooring visualizers, these are the new expectation of today's consumers. As new smart devices emerge and as consumers embrace new, more natural ways to interact with those devices, like voice commands, the micro moment behaviors mobile kickstarted will only multiply. And finally, we need to embrace omnichannel assistance. And what I mean by this is you need to provide a seamless experience to your customers regardless of channel or device. The reality today is consumers can now engage with a company in a physical store, product visualizer, website, mobile app, or through social media. So they no longer distinguish the difference between online and offline. And Google is so often part of that path of purchase. 47% of surveyed global shoppers say they use Google before buying something new. Successful marketers will have a much deeper understanding of their customers at every encounter. They'll focus on acquiring a detailed, data-driven view to really know them and help them along their individual journeys and win their business. We've covered a lot of information today and hopefully you found it not only to be insightful, but also exciting. There's still a lot to do to better understand our consumers' behaviors. However, we now have the ability to apply data, intelligence, and scale to help your business deliver the most relevant information and helpful experiences to your customers. I'm going to leave you with three things. The first, evolution. Consumer behavior continues to evolve and so must our marketing strategies. Digital retail is here to stay, so make sure your business is on the mark. Two, connection. Connect in the moments that matter. Be there, be relevant and be quick or risk using, losing your customers to your competitors. And lastly, execution. Outsource to experts so you can focus on what you do best, running your business. Since March, when the pandemic hit, we've seen a significant spike in flooring consumer searches, indexing higher than any time over the past year in May and continuing to hold strong. Some of the top flooring related searches that we're seeing at the moment are lumber liquidators, laminate flooring, hardware flooring, vinyl flooring. We're also seeing some brands and product lines appearing. For example, Pergo, Lowe's, Home Depot, Empire Flooring. To compete with the box stores, you need to be on the front foot and proactively drive interest to your business and in your local market. As we continue to see the DIY boom, both installers and consumers are searching online, how to clean, lay and install flooring. Focusing on your online presence will allow you to capture that consumer interest in that micro-moment. And the great news is, is that the Creating Your Space and the Floor Force team has a trained bunch of digital marketers and professionals waiting to help. If you'd like to learn more about how Google can help you, I'd encourage you to talk to your Creating Your Space or Floor Force teams um, about how you can do that. Again, a huge thank you for joining me virtually and for taking time out of your busy days. I hope I've been able to provide you with some aha moments and a few nuggets to take away. We're all excited to be on your side and eager to continue helping your businesses grow. Thank you. Thanks so much for spending time with me today. 